Layouts. A layout defines the structure for a user interface in your app, such as in an activity. All elements in the layout are built using a hierarchy of view and view group objects. A view usually draws something on the user that can see and interact with, whereas a view group is an invisible container that defines the layout structure for the view and the other view groups object. So a view is usually draws something on the, the user can see. Like we have seen before, it's called widget. So a view is usually called widget and can be one of many subclasses such as the button or the text view that we have already worked with and we have created in the previous videos. So these are called views, while the view group objects are usually called layouts. That can be one of many types that provide a different layout structure, such as a linear layout or constraint layout, or layout or other uh, types. So the a view group contains a, a children like views, and it may contain a v other view group that has its own children. Let's go to Android Studio and learn about creating a layout. If you want to learn Android app development and start publishing your own apps, as thousands of people did, join our Udemy bestseller and higher rated course with a free coupon in the description below. So when dealing with the view and view groups, so we are dealing with widgets and layout. So we need to go to the layout file folder and we select our main activity underscore main.xml. So we have seen in the challenge number two in the previous videos how to create this app. We will analyze this code. This is our main constraint layout. Okay, and these are the widgets. These are the widgets. Two text views here and here, an edit text and a button. They are all included. If we collapse these, they are all included inside a constraint layout. So these, these are the properties of a constraint layout, and this is the ending block of the constraint layout. So I will remove this, and I will make it as empty in order to start working with this. OK? Now, you can declare a layout. You can declare a layout in two ways. Declaring the UI elements in UI in XML. So we go to the activity or activity XML, any XML file that is maintained in the layout and we can edit the layouts or we create the layouts right over. So Android provides a straightforward XML vocabulary that correspond to the view classes and the subclasses such as those for widgets and layout. When we will start creating like an edit text, we start by uh, this tag, edit text. So it contains a lot of this uh, Android Studio contains all of these helpers, okay, and these codes. Now, for the same as the same as for the layouts. So, if I put here like linear layout, it would be directly configured to a linear linear layout, okay? So, it transformed from constraint layout to a linear layout. The linear layout and the constraint layout, we will learn about them in the next videos. So you can also use Android Studio Layout Editor. So if we go to the design, Layout Editor, if we scroll here to the layouts, to the layouts, we click on it. There is a constraint layout, linear layout, 
this is horizontal and this is vertical frame layout table layout table row and a space also there is if inside legacy there is a grid view relative layout list view and grid layout this will we are working we will work with them in the uh, in the advanced view like grid view or grid layout and the list view okay but till now i want from you to understand the basic structures the basic linear layout the basic layouts like linear like constraint and like relative okay and these are the most commonly used in android studio we can drag and drop a linear layout here so you see in the component tree it is like a nested nested linear layout here so this linear layout i can drag inside this linear layout a text view by putting it like this so you see guys this linear layout now contains a text view if i drag another test view a text view it will be under it this we will discuss them into the linear layout in the next video but till now i want from you to understand that we can create a linear layout or any layout in the xml or by the visual editor okay also we can instantiate a layout elements at runtime and we have seen this many times in the previous videos your app can create view and view groups objects and mani manipulate their properties programmatically so we have created like the, the an image view in the previous uh, videos and we have assigned this image view like this let me show you equal to uh, find view by id r that id dot image view let me create it in the layout here i will search for image view i'll drag and drop an image view just for testing okay click okay image view let me choose this okay its ID is image view, and here we have solved it. Now, programmatically means I can put image view dot set image resource from here. I put the resource for a file or the resources of this image from uh, or programmatically drawable dot. I can put like colorful, for color water like this image i can set it when during running if we check the layout it contains this avatar but while running the app it will be changing the image into this colorful waterfall so it will becomes this image okay during the runtime this is why we are instantiating a layout element at runtime but we don't prefer this we prefer writing everything and see all our layout components during the layout editor or the uh, or the visual editor okay now declaring your ui is in xml allows you to separate the representation of your code from the code that controls its behavior it's very important now Using XML files also make it easier to provide different layouts for a different screen sizes and orientation. Later on, we will see supporting different si screen sizes. Okay, so the Android frameworks give you, gives you the flexibility to use either or both of these methods to build your app's UI. Okay, now, writing in XML. Using the Android XML vocabulary, you can quickly design UI layouts and the screen elements they contain in the same way you create web pages in HTML, HTML with a series of nested elements. Each layout file must contain exactly one root element, like this one root element, and which must be a view group or view 
object. Okay, this is a view group, which is a constraint layout. Once you define the root element, you can add additional layout objects or widgets, such as ch child element to gradually build a view hierarchy that defines your layout. For example, here is a constraint layout, and we have seen it when we when we create it an edit text like this. When we try to make an edit text here, it start adding it to the hierarchy. If we go to the design and we see there is an edit view have been added to the component tree. Okay, so this is the power of using the codes in XML. This is the, uh, the, the power of Android Studio making and having this complex UI, this complex things that make your work easier because if you drag and drop or you add something here, the, it is, it's known as the, the, the component tree and add it to the root layout or root view group. Okay, so after you have declared your layout in XML, save the file with XML.XML extension. This is the XML extension in your Android projects lay, uh, resources layout. Okay, so it will be properly compiled. Okay, this is about the XML uh, layouts and if we need to come to link this layout with our codes when you compile your app each xml layout file is compiled into a view resource you should load the layout resource from your app code in the activity dot on create method okay this is very important note we should always load the layout inside the onCreate method. So you should load the layout resource from your app code in your activity onCreate callback implementation. This is called callback implementation of onCreate method. We will see this in the life cycle uh, of the app later on. So do so by calling set content view this is the set content view that tells the android studio that i am working for the main activity with the activity underscore main dot xml so this layout is linked and this is for uh, designed for this main activity in order to be displayed for the user okay the onCreate callback method in your activity is called by Android framework when your activity is launched. This will be discussed later on when we talk about the activity lifecycle. Now, we have talked about the attributes. If we, if we create like a text view here, wrap content, wrap content, I'll create ID, ID, and uh, I will create like text view one, Android color, I will set it to black. So these are the attributes. Every view and the view group object support supports their own variety of XML attributes. Some attributes are specific to a view object. For example, text views support the text size attribute, but these attributes are also inherited by any view objects that may extend this class. Some are common to all the view objects because they are inherited from the root view class, which is the ID. So all the widgets can contain the ID, but not all the, uh, the widgets contain a text color. Okay, this is, the, uh, this is the 
power of using the widgets and knowing that they are inheriting from each other and inheriting from the view group. Now, the other attributes are considered layout parameters, which are attributes that describe certain layout orientations of the view object as defined by that object's parent view group object. Okay, so the ID, like the ID uh, attribute here, any view object may have an integer ID associated with it to uniquely identify the view within the tree. When the app is compiled, this ID is referenced as an integer, but the ID is typically assigned in the layout XML file as a string and the ID attribute. This is an XML attribute common to all view objects defined by the view class, and you will use it very often. And we have seen this in the previous videos. Okay, so this is how we deal with the layout components. Okay, now let's talk about the layout height and width. You can specify the width and the height with exact measurements through your, uh, through you probably won't want, you would not want to do this often. More often, you will use one of these constraints, the wrap content or match button. So the wrap content here, tells your view to size itself to the dimensions required by its content, while the match parent tells your view to become as big as its parent view group will allow. In general, specifying a layout width and height using absolute units such as pixels is not recommended. Instead, Using relative measurements such as a density independent pixels unit, DP, wrap content, or match parent is better approach because it helps ensure that your app will display properly across a variety of devices screen sizes. The accepted measurement types are defined in the available resources in the uh, course, okay? We can define a layout position like in the top, sizing and padding and margin. So we have talked about this many in the previous videos. Okay, so let's talk about the most common layouts. Each subclass of the view group class provides a unique way to display the views you nest within it. Below, or next, we are going to define, in the next videos, we are going to define the most commonly used layouts in Android Studio. The linear layout, the relative layout, and the constraint layouts, okay? With additional to the grid view and the list view in the advanced, the, in the advanced layouts with an app.